All right. Hi, this is Kit Cabell, one of the co-founders of Veracity and Defiance, and I'm here with a group of Bernie Sanders supporters who are staying here at FDR Park here in Philadelphia. Now, I mentioned I was from Chicago. Can you please introduce yourself? My name is Ken Johnson, originally from Geneva, Illinois. I live in San Francisco. Now I'm here with two guys from Puerto Rico. How are you doing? Hello, from Maryland. Okay. Uh, this guy from Iowa. Iowa. I'm kind of the elder guy here. I'm an old guy, but this man is just telling me about how Hillary's selection of Kane as vice president means she's going to the centrist group and ignoring Bernie supporters and, and all the energy and enthusiasm that we have shown the world. And, and we're, we're sitting here discussing, figuring out what are we going to do? Never Hillary. I mean, if so many people here cannot vote for Hillary based on her record. And her lies, and and and, and ask, ask so so what's what's your concern with Clinton's choice to be vice president of the United States? With her choice of Tim Kaine, yes. It just, I mean, it just clearly showed that she had no really regard, and the DNC has no really regard in wanting to get the movement that Bernie started behind her. The, I, 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 I was Texas. Oh, yeah, you're a Bernie Sanders delegate? Arizona, Arizona. Yeah, and so, I, w I mean, I was telling people, it's just, it's, it's clear that, you know, I, I think they're going for maybe 40% of the voters that would go for Bernie, and the rest they're going to try to, you know, scrounge up from centrist independents, you know, who, who would vote Republican in any other election, but, you know, they won't vote for Trump, or Republicans who are never Trump who are going to go for Clinton. I mean, you could see so many neoconservatives and so many uh, other conservative, you know, funders that have funded past Republican, you know, president, you know, they funded Romney, they funded McCain in 08, they funded Bush in, you know, the 2000s, and now they're funding Clinton. That's telling. That is, that's huge. You know, you just uh, can I please have your name and uh, you are a Bernie Sanders delegate? I am. What's your name? Then? My name is Eric um, Cardenas, E-R-I-C. C A R D E N A S. Now, what uh, attracted you to the Bernie Sanders campaign? Why did you decide to get involved uh, to help out Bernie Sanders during this Democratic primary? Uh, I was one of those voters that, that Bernie has talked about that was disenfranchised. I was not even going to vote or participate in this election because it, it honestly all started, you know, back after Obama won his second election in 2012. And when I started reading more and more about campaign finance and Citizens United and super PACs and just how much of an influence big money has and special interest has on politics. And so OpenSecrets.org is a great website. It, it discloses all, like what all candidates, where, where they get their funding from. And when I saw that the same people that were funding Obama in 2008 bankrolled Romney in 2012, it just shows that it doesn't matter to them who wins, Republican or Democrat. It doesn't matter for Wall Street. It doesn't matter for special interests. It doesn't matter for the fossil fuel industry because they're paying both sides. And that just ensures that whoever wins, they win. And, and, and so I was done. I was like, it doesn't matter. Hillary Clinton has been, she, she's been supposed to be the president since 2008. You know, like it's, she was, it was supposed to be an anointment process. And so I was like, my vote doesn't matter if Clinton's just automatically going to be the president because all of those same people that bankrolled Romney in 2012, bankrolled Obama in 2008, guess who they're bankrolling this time? It's Clinton. You know, she's getting all of the money. And so I was done. And then here comes this, this old 73-year-old, like, you know, Democratic, Socialist, Jewish, amazing man who I, I didn't think he was real at first, honestly. I'm like, this, there's no way. Like, and then, and then I started reading more about him. I started watching his videos. Started, there was a time where I was watching every single one of Bernie's rallies, you know, going into last year. And, and I was like, this guy is the real deal. He, he really isn't beholden to, to special interests because Look, I mean, look at the movement now. No one knew back then, and I didn't know back then, but look, $27 per contribution, you know, on average, which is unprecedented in today's political arena where people need to have need, <laughs> need to have super PACs, and they think that they need to be beholden to special interests, but it's not, it's not true. And, and, and Bernie, Bernie brought up the real issues that are plaguing so many people in America today 
and and he's the only person you know he's the only person talking about the fact that that you know tuition should be you know affordable it's the, it's the fact that 30 years ago 40 years ago a high school diploma what it was then is equivalent to what a college diploma is now and so it's just it's just so ridiculous that that um you know that that people aren't realizing that that these are rights that that are kind of you know they make sense to to the majority of Americans. You, you know, you ask them about healthcare, you ask them about tuition, you ask them about all these things, and the majority of Americans do end up supporting them. But I mean, when when the you know the, the DNC was bought out, I mean, the emails just came out, um, you know, from WikiLeaks this past weekend that that showed clear collusion between the two parties, and it's just like. The DNC was already bought out, and it was their job to get Hillary to where she was. I mean, I always saw Debbie Wasserman as kind of that sacri- that sacrificial lamb. Like, I, you know, I'm sure they they sat her down. They're like, "Hey, you may not make it to the end of this, but if you get Clinton the nomination, then you know you're good. Don't don't worry." And and look what happened. She went from unofficially working for for Hillary Clinton to now officially working. She's going to be an honorary chair of her campaign. So, I mean, he he gave hope to so many people that had lost hope in this country like he 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 woke up so many people he he talked about income and wealth inequality and how we're the most you know the richest country in the history of the world and there are you know close to 40 million children living in poverty and and all these you know 29 million people that don't have access to health care still so it's just like bernie was the only person who who was bringing up these issues and and that's why I became involved. I mean, this. And and how did you get the chance to become a delegate for Bernie Sanders? Obviously, there must have been a large process to be become a delegate for Bernie Sanders. Can you tell us at least why you were selected? Yes, yeah, I am sweating. Oh, that's okay. Uh, Don't worry, we're all, we're all out here, So I so I volunteered for Bernie a lot in Arizona, uh, and I was I was all over the place uh, in in Tucson. That's that's where I went to school. I just graduated from there, and then uh, after that. I, di- I I applied to become you know a delegate. And the way it works, you have to go to the you know the district convention and then the the, the state convention. And uh, I I sadly I had missed the state convention. And I was like, great, there it goes. I'm not going to be a delegate. But I since I helped out so much in Arizona, and then I ended up actually going to California, and I was there for two weeks just volunteering, you know, on my own dime, uh, just you know helping out the campaign. And someone from the Bernie campaign told me about an alternate delegate that dropped. They already had all my creden- like all my credentials, because I had applied. I had done everything except go to that last thing, because I wasn't able to go to that one weekend. And um, and yeah, and she was like, Eric, like I know how much work you've done for Bernie. Like you were the first person that came to mind once this alternate delegate dropped out. Would you like to be on? And so so yeah, so I I joined in, and and I'm glad I did. Uh, it's it's been. It's been quite the experience. Like yesterday was was uh, was my first time ever being at a democratic, you know, convention, uh, and and so yeah, it's been it's been definitely a eye-opening experience. Uh, a lot of the delegates in there were, were calling it, you know, the DNC. It's the the Democratic National Commercial, and you know, Trump fear factor is it, you know, it's half and half is kind of what it is in there, but. Um, but yeah, so so that that's how that happened. So underground, uh, obviously, uh, I could not get inside the Democratic National Convention, but you were obviously inside there. Were you part of the large walkout that was, uh, you know, protesting against Hillary Clinton being selected as a Democratic nominee? Uh, yes, I, I was a member of that uh, that walkout. There there were hundreds of, of delegates that that left, and um, and they went to the media tent. Uh, the media tent that is located outside of the Wells Fargo Center and the reason they went to the media tent is because the media can't ignore hundreds of Bernie delegates chanting right inside the tent and so it it got covered and I mean I haven't seen the coverage yet so we'll see when I get back to the hotel and when I see tomorrow but uh, but yeah it was it was it was pretty it was pretty uh, inspiring just seeing so many people there and and one of the the signs that spoke to me the most is that like it is someone i forgot what it had i think it's on my phone but it was basically it's like it, yeah it's like unity um i have it i have it hold up i got it don't worry uh let's see 
That's quite all right. So obviously, this this whole campaign has really gotten you involved to be active in American politics. But it's also clear that there's a lot of Americans, a lot of Bernie Sanders supporters that are hurt, that are upset by the actions of the Democratic National Party. Uh, what words of advice would you give to Sanders supporters? What kind of words of encouragement would you give them? Because obviously, again, like I said before, people are upset, people are hurting. What can you tell all these potential Bernie Sanders supporters that are going to be watching this video? Uh, what I would tell them is is what I'm telling a lot of a lot of people who who kind of lost faith and and hope in Bernie, and, and just know that this man has you know people are like you know some people say oh yeah he's been fighting for the last year night and day but oh but so have I no. Bernie's been fighting his entire career for this. He's been fighting for us since before we even knew he was fighting for us. This man has been there when no one was listening. I mean, there's that iconic picture of him back in the 90s, House of Representatives, you know, speaking to an empty house because that that's just how, you know, Washington works sometimes. That, you know, some sometimes there's no one to listen to you. And people are finally listening to Bernie. And, and so what I, one message I want to tell them is that don't, don't take that anger out on Bernie. You know, put those those emotions and that energy into continuing the movement that he started. You know, this is it, it's our revolution, and it's and it's like Bernie said. You know, it's it's a lot more than him. It's not me. It, it's us, and it's about a lot more than just one election. It's about continuing it. It's about staying involved. It's about running for office. It's about running for office on the ideals that Bernie had, you know, tr trying not to be beholden to special interests and just, you know, trying to do it with the everyday average American citizen. And it shows that, that, you know, you really can do it if you start off small, you know, if you start small, something really amazing can happen. And, you know, Bernie came really close and and I think we're we're not too far from from someone really taking taking the helm and and, and taking what Bernie started and, and creating something you know really beautiful coming in the future. And, and I really hope that that people aren't don't get too saddened by you know by by what's happening you know here this week and and really know that that it's not over. And and it if anything the fight's just starting. It, it's it, it's going to keep going. And and people just need to stay. So many people have been woken up, you know, that they've woken up to the, the harsh realities that face, you know, the people in this country today. And so just stay the best thing you can do. And, and people have been asking me is just just stay informed, you know, keep reading, you know, keep, you know, going to alternative news sites like like your, You know, I'm guessing that your site is alternative. veracity and defiance. Yes, we are an online independent news online. agency in Chicago. Exactly. Awesome. You know, go go to, you know, you go to news agencies like that. Uh, and just th that's the best thing you do is just stay informed and just you know keep spreading the word and just keep telling people about these issues. Oh, here for Chicago. Don't worry, no one messes with Chicago, my friend. Hey, really, and and the people in Chicago are waking up too. And this is really about being silent or getting up and jo joining a rally, so joining joining a political movement and getting local officials elected. Who have progressive ideals and values like we do. So then, this is a collective question to all of you. Then, uh, Bernie Sanders, two weeks obviously before he made his, uh, you know, concession speech here in the Democratic uh, convention, but two weeks before he made his endorsement, he made a call out, a challenge to the supporters to get actively involved in politics. Do each of you feel uh, th the need to step up and answer that call that Bernie Sanders has gave to his supporters, or at least know people who are going to step up to that call? I mean, you're a Bernie Sanders delegate. Are you going to answer that call to perhaps get actively involved in American politics? Because I think we all know Bernie Sanders, he's a great politician, a great leader, someone that we all can follow to, and he's for 30 years he's been right on every single social issue. Are you going to continue on that legacy and step forward and get involved in, in at least in the political process here in this country? Because he can only go on for so long, yeah. but you and all of you are still here. Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've met so many people. I mean, I'm that's the coolest part about the convention. Yes, the convention is not the best place for Bernie supporters to feel good about themselves in regards to what's happening on the convention floor and what's happening with the DNC. But the best part about it is the networking that's going on. I've met so many people that that are like, oh yes, I'm about to run for office here. I'm running for my county commissioner. Uh, I'm running for, you know, for a spot on the school council board. You know, all these people that, that are 
that would never have thought of running for these things before um, Bernie came around. And and it's funny, I, I'm actually uh, I'm actually going to law school in the fall. I've already been accepted and everything. But but uh, thank you. But um, but I always joke to I joke to my mom, and she didn't like this joke. Sorry, mom, when you see this. But I, I joke I joke to my mom and said, if Bernie wins, I, I'm not gonna go to law school. Like I'm gonna you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go and try to work for his campaign. You know, work in the White House, work, you know, run for office or whatever. But but yeah. So I mean, uh, so. You know, sad, like sadly, um, you know, uh, lo and behold, a, a miracle happens. It, it looks like I will be going to law school, but I definitely see in my in my future uh, eventually wanting to to run, uh, you know, for office and, and and really trying to spread, you know, the ideals and, and the beliefs that that Bernie has been been talking about. And and there's so many people that I've met that that also have, you know, have, have wanted to to become involved politically solely because of this movement that's been started by Bernie. And that's, that's very good here. And once again, you know, congratulations for being a Bernie Sanders delegate. Thank you for coming over here. But to all of you, are all of you willing to step up to, or at least know people who are going to answer the call that Bernie Sanders gave to his supporters? Yeah, yeah. so there, I live in Vermont. Um, and I, um, I got very, in, I've never really been involved in politics. What's your name? My name is Rebecca. Pleasure to meet you too. Um, yeah, I've never been that involved in politics. My brother used to get on me about it all the time, and um, until Bernie Sanders. And so, I, I'm actually thinking about running for select board. It's like hard to say that. <laughs> it's scary, but um, but I think it's really important. And my son and I have been. We went canvassing, and we I had a bunch of phone banks, and I just held a party for a woman who's running for House of um, Representatives in my county. Um, had a little party. So I'm connected with Vermont Rights and Democracy, um, which is an organization that's a progressive organization trying to get local folks in office, um, or progressive folks in office. So, yeah, the guy that runs or is part of that organization is he stays on me <laughs> he's really trying to keep me going and they're they're really great at like helping you know hold up people that want to run for office and and help get that, make that happen well that's all, all the best to you in your uh, potential campaign and uh anyone else have, have you considered stepping up or at least becoming actively involved or at least feel the need to continue on with the progressive revolution that bernie sanders established i mean yeah, i do um i I'm inspired to do what I've been wanting to do this whole time, which is be writing and um, and blogging and um, and starting a project that I've had in mind for quite a while. And what's your name, please? My name's Julia. Me too. Thanks. Uh, obviously, before I got into this conversation, you guys were talking about what's going to happen next. There's a, a clear. Uh, polling data showing that Americans don't trust Donald Trump, they don't trust Hillary Clinton, and people want another option. Do you feel that because of what the DNC did to Bernie Sanders and throughout this entire primary that more and more uh, Bernie Sanders supporters and more and more Americans are going to consider voting third party or getting involved with the third party uh, politics, either libertarian or green party? Do you feel that's how this revolution is going to continue on? And do you think that's going to hinder Hillary Clinton? And you're very confident for answering that question. So tell us, tell us my friend, how do you feel about that? Why don't you introduce yourself too? My name is Darius Kanan Cotis. I'm from Vermont. I'm her son. And I've never been into politics like at all. I never really knew what politics really were. Like but, um and um my mom got into Bernie Sanders pretty early on because he's our senator and a lot of people from Vermont felt the same way. And um, so we got into him. We did phone banking and canvassing in New Hampshire and just New York. And um, fought, like every time there was a primary night for the last, last um, I don't know how many primaries. Like quite. There, there, there have been a few primaries where the people are questioning the results of the primary. So, so we've been like watching all the primary results live and sitting down with a pint of ice cream. <laughs> <laughs>
think that they're going to be on debate stages and they're just going to keep going. The momentum is going to be put into them. And, yeah, I, I think that they, if even if they don't win, um, it's good if we can put our energy into them, um, then it's going to make a difference and it's going to make an impact and people are going to like see that the first time in history like third party candidates have been getting up there and that we this momentum this movement not momentum this movement is not stopping and even if they don't win even if Hillary or Trump wins which would be a tragedy um, we we are a force to be reckoned with. Okay, so right on, my friend. So let me ask all of you this. Uh, collectively, uh, we, we know what's wrong with the potential Trump administration. I've been asking this to Bernie Sanders supporters and people on the street in Philadelphia. In one word, what concerns all of you? And we're going to start with you first. One word, what concerns you of a potential Clinton administration? Just one word? Yeah. Um, or at least, at least a few thoughts about what, what, what would concern you in regards to a Clinton administration. Uh, as far as her foreign policy, she is uh, a war hawk, while I see Trump as more of an isolationist, um, which people in his own probably party probably don't like him for being as isolationist as he is, but Hillary Clinton would definitely get us more involved in the uh, Middle East, and she would have us um, protecting, basically giving back up to all the... the um, the kings and and uh, 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 what's the right word? Uh, all the monarchies and stuff that run the Middle East that the people themselves are trying to overthrow there. And what concerns you with the potential Clinton administration if she were to beat Donald Trump? Uh, I think what what concerns most people and it's just that dishonesty, that lack of trust, that that has just been cleared throughout the last year is just what what version of Hillary Clinton are we going to get are we, are we going to get the one that is pro TPP or and and calls it the gold standard are we going to get the one that says it's terrible you know are we going to get the one who wants to make college affordable are we going to you know and, and like it's just i i don't know what version of her we're going to get and and that that that's what worry, worries a lot of people is she, you know she's she may be saying all these things but it's it's really is it just to win you know, and and a lot of most people think yeah she 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 will say i mean i think obama said it back in 08 you know hillary she she will say anything and, and do nothing you know like it's, it's it's scary it's so so with you you don't know which clinton we're going to get you don't know where she's going to stand on certain issues yeah. So what concerns you with the potential Clinton administration? Well, I do know where she will stand or how she will respond to situations. And I know that it's always going to be in favor of her donors and her, her bosses. And it's never going to be for the people and it never has been. And, and there's so much atrocity in the world right now. And it's, we're on a fast track to the bottom with her. And what concerns you with the potential Clinton administration? I would say similar to what Julia just said, um, just the fact that she has so much power, um, or not she, but that those that that, that, are, that the establishment or donors would have power over her decisions. Yeah, the oligarchy, the neoliberalists. It's like I don't want that movement to continue. I want that movement to be stopped. Like that is the most important thing. A new young man, what concerns you with the potential Clinton administration? Well, there are many, 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 many things, but, um... There's a lot, there's a lot of issues that, that people have been saying that's wrong with the Clinton administration, but how do you feel about a potential Clinton administration? Do you think that she'll represent you and look after your best interests? There's a lot of things that have been said now, but one of the things that I think of is that, like, scares me a lot, is that, um, Vladimir... Putin actually like said if Hillary becomes president it'll be World War 3 and she's like 
all for wars against the Middle East, wars against Russia. She's just a complete warmonger. So you're afraid of the of her connection to the military industrial complex and that the fact that she'll be for more wars and obviously you know, people are going to have to fight those wars. Are you afraid that you, you might be drafted in or something like that? That and afraid that, like, yeah, that and just many, many things. Like, if there's World War Three and we enter a war with Russia, then it's not going to turn out well for us. As a collective species. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, those those are those are justified. And you, sir, what uh, what concerns you uh, with the potential um, uh, Clinton administration? Well, can you hear me properly? Uh, we can hear you just fine, right? All right. Well, my concern is that um, actually, I agree with this lad very very much. You're you're really bright. You're a very bright person. Um, but I honestly don't think there's going to be a draft. Uh because there's so many able-bodied people. I think this might be a, a good plan to increase our military industrial complex, allow spying and cameras to become more affordable and more opulent and just everywhere. But, um... Are you afraid of like your private security being uh, infiltrated by the Clinton administration or at least her enacting policies to take away like net neutrality and to also uh, restrict uh, uh, freedom of speech and protest is, is uh, are those some of your concerns? Indeed, those are very very well said. Um, it's just it's just giving money into the, the to the wrong wrong hands, really. And I, and I was, are, are you concerned about her donors and some of her decisions, like some what 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 they would want from her? Say again. Are you concerned about some of her donors and what they would want out of her? out of her administration. Obviously, Clinton's receiving a lot of money from a lot of the donors. Um, so with that, I, I think two parties is pretty easy to buy. Three, probably not so bad either. There's a lot of companies out there. They're usually come and do, too. So like you have Monsanto Red, your Coca-Cola, or Monsanto Blue, your Pepsi. Your choice, your Frito-Lays, or just any anything. So I think um, we need more than uh, three parties. And I think um, this might be a good opportunity to increase people's awareness into uh, the potential that politics really is bought up and down, left and right. And if there are more courage for write-ins, at least we'll have better uh, dialogue. A lot of people don't talk in politics. It's a rare thing. And even if they do, the media portrays it in such a way that's not very well um, helpful to us. It actually just, it's a good way to fear mom. And you, sir, what concerns you with a potential Clinton administration? Money. Actually, I'm concerned about public banking getting uh, established in this country, like North Dakota. The farmers in North Dakota 130 years ago were getting foreclosed out of the banks and they started their own bank. North, the, the public bank of North Dakota makes loans to their own communities. And uh, money is a utility, uh, is, a, is a resource. Uh, a human resource. We should have control of that money, not the Fed. And the, if we can control the money with public banking, it's going to go a long way to ending all wars. But uh, got to follow the money. Thank you very much. And all of you, thank you for allowing me to join your conversation. I'm Kit Cabello, one of the co-founders of Veracity and Defiance. Please follow us as we're going to cover this entire convention. Uh, follow us along on our social media sites, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and we're hoping to keep all of you informed uh, and obviously follow along with more concerned citizens and delegates. So, again, thank, thank you. Thank you.